Hello, welcome everybody. Welcome to the Q&A recording of the film Charlotte, playing as part of the 12th European Union Human Rights Film Base. I'm here with Tahir Rana and Eric Warren. Hi, Eric. Hi, Tahir. How are you? Hi. Hi. Doing well, thank Great. you. Thank you for being here with us today. They are directors of the film Charlotte. And I just want to give a little information about them before we start. Uh, Tairana is an Emmy-nominated director in animation. He started his career at DreamWorks Animation. Charlotte is his first feature film. Uh, Eric Warren, with a, he's, he has a degree with fine arts specializing in film. He began his career as animator and storyboard artist. As a director, his 3D animated short Alex and Ghost won multiple awards and his feature film Leap, which he co-developed and co-directed, was released directly worldwide and on Netflix. So, are, uh, do you want to add anything else to this information? Uh, yeah, me. I was uh, uh, two years ago, right after, right before Charlotte. Actually, I was uh, head of story on a feature animation that is uh, being released in a few months from now. Okay, great. So we can start to talk about your beautiful film then, if, if you don't have anything else to add. Uh, I just want to start talking about Charlotte. I think it was a beautiful animation film and it affected me because it was also a real life story. So uh, can you uh, tell us a little bit to the audience uh, what the film is about and who is Charlotte Solomon? Um, I'll give a synopsis. Um, yeah, go ahead. Uh, so the film Charlotte is uh, actually a biopic, as you mentioned, it's, it's a true life story um, about a woman who lived um, during the uh, occupation of Germany during the Second World War. Um, and she was, um, she was a German Jewish um, woman who had to flee her home in, in Berlin to the south of France. Um, and while she was uh, there uh, on the run from um, her captors, the, the Nazis, she painted um, close to a thousand um, paintings uh, that um, were um, found after she was taken to Auschwitz and executed. Uh, now those paintings told the story of her life um, in a fictionalized version that was meant to be um, shown on stage um, so it was, it was really ahead of its time. It was, it was, um, a lot of people consider it the world's first graphic novel. Um, so that was, um, discovered after, after she died many years later, um, in a really, really fascinating, uh, story and her, her paintings, um, were very dynamic and vibrant expressionist style paintings. Um, so her story was one that was a tragic story, but also a really fascinating one. She left behind a lot that we adapted into um, the film Charlotte. Yeah, and also uh, I guess these uh, founded gr graphics are later called Life or Theater, right? Put, yes. They formed a book and it was called Life or Theater. It's beautiful and uh, many people can't find their illustrations in that book, right? Yes, exactly. if I may just had something she was very young we we follow her as she's uh, about she's a teenager and trying to find herself in drawings and then entering into the uh, fine arts academy and uh and um uh, going on and fleeing and and everything so it's like from something like 15 16 up to 26 when she's been arrested and and killed yeah it yeah it was so unfortunate but she, even though she was so young she had really really precious paintings and really precious illustrations that left behind uh to the art world i think it's that's amazing and i'm curious about how were you inspired to, to tell this story how this idea ca came up and how did you guys find each other how this journey started can you tell a little, little bit about that well, I, I never know if I should answer, or should answer <laughs> but um, I was with the film first, so I'll start. Um, yeah. So Charlotte uh, was actually, it's, I mean, the story of how Charlotte actually got produced is, is something that could also be in a movie. But um, the, Julia Rosenberg, the producer, she really 
deserves all the credit for, for this film ever being financed. Because as you know, um, animated films like this one um, are really hard to get off the ground just because it's, it's unusual um, for especially a North American produced film um, that's for adults and that's animated. So Julie Rosenberg um, was uh, um, a, a, an amazing person who saw this book when she was a, a young girl. Um, she grew up Jewish and the book was given to her and it was sort of her, her life's mission um, to kind of see this through. So she got the idea to finance it as a, as a movie um, and she went through um, all the channels that it, that it takes to get these things done. And it was a very difficult journey for her. It was brought to the studio that I was working at, which is in Toronto. Um, and I came across a script and when I read the script, I, I really, really wanted to be a, a part of the film. So um, uh, that was kind of my involvement with it. It was sort of brought to me, I read it. I fell in love immediately with the idea of Charlotte's story, her struggle, her perseverance, all the elements that um, were there that I, that I knew would make a successful film and uh, that it was gonna be animated in 2D, which is my favorite genre. Um, I absolutely, um, you know, was chomping at, at the bit to be a part of it. And uh, so we were in production um, and uh, we found out sort of pretty early on that I wasn't gonna be able to do this alone. Um, so the international search for um, an incredible co-director um, to work along with me um, yielded uh, Eric and Eric was very successful. Um, uh, he had a, a, a feature film, really successful feature film under his belt. So he had the experience that, that I knew I needed to lean on because this was my feature debut. Um, so then Eric was brought on and uh, that was when the, the film really uh, came alive because that was the opportunity to kind of have another person to bounce ideas off that, that brought a lot to the table. So uh, we we worked really well in Simpatico almost immediately, and uh, I think that uh, becomes really evident um, when watching the film. That that uh, you know it is the kind of film that that needs uh, needs multiple voices. Um, Eric can add anything he would like with his. Uh, yeah, his yeah. You you say the you say the lot actually. Uh, it's true. I think um, yeah. Tai had Tai had this two D experience. Uh, that um, uh, I didn't have. I, I just had, you know, uh, triplets of, Bel of Belleville in 2D behind me. That was a long time ago. And um, so he, he was really, uh, um, you know, into the TD, uh, 2D things. And uh, which was great because uh, that's something that I, you know, I wanted to go. The reason why I actually accepted this movie was because exactly like Terry, I was moved by the story. Uh, there was all the ingredients, uh, uh, you know, an objective, lots of obstacles, uh, lots of dramas, histories, mixing with uh, history with a big age, um, how people struggle, uh, a real true uh, um, story at the same time, talking about art, which was, you know, something I was really uh, um, affected just because my father is a, is an artist as well, a painter, mm -hmm. and I used to paint as well. So there were lots of things, uh, you know, that I was close to. And, um, and so arriving on this project, I was finishing another one, arriving on this project, meeting Taya, and, and right away we kind of knew exactly uh, um, what we could do, where our strengths were, uh, um, and how we could really work on this project to make it something uh, um, more than just drawings moving actually because we knew there was some emotions there was uh, you know we had to respect charlotte's life um, enhance it but at the same time make sure that the audience is almost like you know with her uh, um, so it, it was um so we use everything we had i had some i was very um, involved into um, uh, colors and um, and um, editing 
and framing and stuff like that. And Taya was really into the animation, you know, driving this team of animators, um, which was not easy because there was some part 2D animation, but at the same time, something like uh, um, uh, computer animated as well. So there was lots of things go going on that he had to struggle with. And, um, and so with all that, I think uh, what was really great is we always had this kind of conversation uh, with one another on every subject, trying to push everything and to make sure that we arrive to this kind of emotional movie that we tried you know, to, to do. Yeah, it's, it's, it's excellent, actually. And also, uh, did you plan to do this uh, as an animation film just from the start? Was it planned to be do, doing animated film or was it also planned in non-animation non too? Just all, at all the beginning of this project, how was the process yeah, I, started? To speak to that, um, it, uh, it was always conceived as, as an animated film. Um, and, and the reason for that, um, it, it felt very natural to um, a story about a painter who was a visual artist who actually depicted her life through paintings um, that, that we would do it through um, 2D drawing as well. Um, what's interesting about that is that Julia, um, who, like I mentioned, was the, the proof, the she had never done animation before. She's a, mm -hmm. a really experienced and respected live action film producer. Uh, so it was her first time. And uh, Eric and I, we live in the world of animation. We've never done live action before. Um, so it was a really nice meeting of the minds. And um, I think that, uh, you know, the film could have been live action. Um, uh, it, it certainly would have been more conventional as a live action film. But having it done in animation, I think, gave us the access to convey all the, the emotions and the, the influence the audience through the color palette and also project Charlotte's own paintings on screen in a really seamless way that um, would have been more difficult in a, in a different medium. So um, uh, yeah, to answer your question, um, it was always conceived that way and, and it was challenging, but uh, completely rewarding to do it in that, in that style. I think the same too, actually. I mean, it, the, the film being an animated film makes it a more impactful film and the audience can relate to Charlotte a lot more, I guess, because it's, it's in a way reflects her art too uh, a lot more than if it, if, if it would be an animated film. I don't know if it would make the same impact. So I guess oh, it was the right truly. choice. Yeah, Eric. Yeah, yeah, truly. There are things, you know, we, we can add po poetry to this. You can... Yeah. Um, and, and there's another thing um, we've, I mean, nowadays we've seen so many movies on this subject and, um, and um, like some others, but I mean, the idea is always to try to find an angle that, you know, is going to suddenly uh, create a bridge between the audience and the story we're trying to tell. So, you know, even I'm thinking, I was thinking of Spielberg when we did this movie, when, when he did, um, uh, when he did a Schindler's List. And if mm. you look at this movie, um, he's, a, he's a great director. He's, he did so many great movies, uh, live actions and everything, but he chose to go in black and white for yeah. telling Schindler's List and playing with this as if it was like, you know, the more you go out of the reality and the more you can suddenly uh, uh, talk about it. So that's something like um, yeah. that, something that was great that the producer was really wanting to uh, go into animation for that and at the same time that was certainly and and obviously the the best choice that that could ever uh, have been done yeah so true good point actually the the more you you go away from the reality in images maybe sometimes you're more clo closer to reality too at the same time so yeah it's, it's a great thing just you shared with us right now and also uh, i wanted to ask you about the preparation process i was curious about did you ever talk to any real relatives of charlotte uh, are there any people who are alive and how was your preparation pro process historically i was also curious about that 
Um, so unfortunately, there are no descendants of Charlotte Solomon. Um, the only person that we actually did reach out to um, was the daughter or niece of uh, Ottilie Moore, which is, um, she was one of the, the supporting characters in the film um, who played a role in, in having Charlotte, um, uh, putting up Charlotte in, in France. Um, but uh, pretty and much- I'm um, sorry. Also, she ded dedicated her book to Oli, right? If I remember it yes. correctly. Yeah, yeah. Li yeah, Life yeah. or it's Theater, true. she ded dedicated to her, yeah. Yeah, exactly. yeah it was exactly. given to her and then she gave that to the to Charlotte's parents. And, and um, it's, um, I, I think the, um, uh, there was the, um, the um, what do you call that? Uh, you know, the, um, in, um, you know, in Amsterdam, there was this, um, um, how do we call that when when the the one who had the um, the painting now um, the people we've been working with uh, so that we have some information sometimes. oh the Charlotte Sullivan Foundation yeah the foundation exactly so yeah we had the foundation on on our side um, um, and Julia has, has been very uh, uh, picky on trying to make sure that everything we would go to uh, uh, first of all would would have this approval stamp there uh, because we didn't we didn't want to go rogue and and you know uh, tell something that wasn't true or something um of course and i'm, I'm gonna use the opportunity for that of course and you see in the movie she, she, charlotte is saying that i've called that life or theater meaning that it's it can be real and it can be unreal sometimes and yeah. she's even saying that she's painting some thing that happened and some other that never happened but uh, are true uh, uh, true are uh, true too so I think she's inviting us to think of what is what is true what is untrue and at the same time there is this thing where she had um, a, in the movie we she has a love affair with uh, Wolfson and and this character um, has been interviewed later and he, he discovered the, the book and um, actually he, he said he never had any love story with her. But what is, the way I see it and, and, and what I find interesting is uh, it's not because nothing happened that she was not in love with, her, with him. So I, I think that the fact that she's been painting him a lot, uh, uh, writing lots of things about him and everything. So we kind of went to the, you know, we took the, we took the step saying that, okay, she had an affair with, with him in a way, in her dream or not, but the love story mm. was true. Yeah. yeah. And Tahir, so you were going to say something, I guess, no? I just interrupted you a few seconds ago. But <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I guess Eric answered everything. That, oh, okay. Uh, there were no direct descendants, but the Charlotte Solomon Foundation um, was a really great resource and, and they had full approval of, of the script. And um, in a lot of cases, we, we um, uh, spoke with them and corresponded with them about a lot of the points of the film. Yeah, excellent. And I also, uh, I guess you collaborated with great artists, right? For the voiceovers. I mean, you worked with, I guess, Kieran Lightley, Marion Cotillard, right? Yes. How, how was also that process? Because it's in, so important when you're doing an animation, the sound is so important. The people who are giving life to that, that those characters are so important. So how did that collaboration happen? How was uh, that process also? Can you give a little information about that too? Um, well, I what I can tell you is uh, you're right. Like the voice cast is, is pretty tremendous. There's a lot of... Um, a lot of uh, Oscar winners and um, really celebrated actors that have, have lended their talents to the film. Um, and, you know, we're not a, 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 a huge budget film. Um, I think the reason that they were all uh, attracted, it was the same reason that Eric and I really, and, and yeah. a lot of people were, is that when you kind of learn of the story and what what's really surprising is that, you know, myself being, uh, it, an art history 
a student and being in, in animation and visiting galleries all around the world, I had never heard of Charlotte Solomon before. Mm. Um, and, and it's quite incredible um, because I'm a big fan of her work in retrospect, but the fact that she's not more well known, um, I, I almost took it upon myself as like a mission. You know, I, I wanna make this film so the world learns about this remarkable woman. And I think a lot of the people involved as well as, you know, as you mentioned, um, Kira and, and Marianne and Jim Broadbent and the, Mark Strong, the list goes on and on. Um, it was sort of the same thing. They would learn about Charlotte and say, oh my God, what an incredible story. Um, and uh, that's sort of how their involvement started. And, and I think everybody did a, a really fantastic job. The, the records were done um, during a pandemic. So mm. it was very unusual. Um, where usually um, they would be in a recording studio. Um, everything was done this way over Zoom. Um, and, uh, and I think despite that, um, they st still all did a, a really remarkable job. Yeah, excellent. I mean, I, I think they are great actors and actresses, so their involvement is so important to this project also. And I agree with you. I think uh, not so many people know about Charlotte. And by this film, many, many people internationally, globally will be able to learn about her story too. And I hope uh, through our, also through our uh, festival, uh, many people also learn about Charlotte too in Turkey. So uh, Eric Tahir, thank you so much for being here with us again today. Uh, it, it was delightful for me because I loved the movie so much. It, it inspired me in so many many ways so I was really happy to talk with you today thank you again and if you want to add anything just please then we can finish <laughs> just one thing it's of about course. an artist and you know how the the um, an artist is growing up so we we learn to we, we start learning uh, uh, to know the artist after many many years and we see how we the evolution and everything that's what is making is art with a big A. In Charlotte's case, unfortunately, she did her first piece and then she was, she, she was like uh, took out of, of the map. And it's very unfortunate that um, we never had the opportunity to see how she would have grown up as an artist. And um, knowing that uh, your festival is about human rights and stuff like that, I mean, the right to express oneself and the right to do is our art the way we want and the way we think it is, is crucial for an artist, for every artist in the world. So I think that this, the Charlotte Solomon is really the kind of icon of those artists who have been cut in the middle of something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're so right. I mean, they're all so important and they're all, all they're artists who are trying to uh, share their voices, their thoughts with the world, even though I, I think the same. I mean, I always think uh, when someone, a young artist, uh, goes away in an early age, in early time, I always think the same. I mean, there, sh there could be a lot of things that they could offer to the world if they lived a couple of years more. But unfortunately, mm -hmm. it's not always like that. But at least with films like this and by, by talking uh, with each other like this, we can honor them and we can just uh, let the world know a lot more about them. So I, I really appreciate you being here today. Thank you so much. Our pleasure. Thank Great you. To meet you and talk to you. Thank you. And nice, nice to meet you all, guys.